The first thing most of us notice about an elephant is its trunk, a long, flexible appendage, heavy yet graceful, powerful yet tender. But to call it just a nose would be like calling the ocean a puddle. The elephant's trunk is one of the most extraordinary creations in the animal kingdom, a living tool made of 40,000 muscles without a single bone. To put that into perspective, the entire human body has only about 600 muscles. And yet, in this one structure, the elephant carries more strength and precision than a human arm and hand combined. It is a straw, a hand, a hose, a trumpet, and a lifeline. With its trunk, an elephant can rip branches from a tree with enough force to rival machinery. Yet in the next instant, the same trunk can delicately pluck a single blade of grass or lift a newborn calf from the mud. Scientists say the trunk evolved from a fusion of the elephant's nose and upper lip millions of years ago. Over time, this union transformed into something astonishing, a multi-purpose organ so versatile that elephants rely on it for nearly every aspect of life. The trunk breathes, smells, touches, holds, and feels. It is how elephants drink, sucking up water like a giant straw and then spraying it into their mouths. It is how they eat, grabbing grass, fruits, and bark in swift, practiced motions. It is how they greet one another, wrapping trunks together in gestures that resemble a human handshake, or, perhaps more closely, an embrace. But the trunk is more than function. It is language. Elephants use it to communicate emotions. A mother gently stroking her calf, a bull thrashing it in aggression, a curious youngster exploring the world through touch, and then, there is the sound. The trumpet call of an elephant, blasted through its trunk, is a voice of the wild, sometimes playful, sometimes furious, sometimes desperate. It carries across the plains a sound that can shiver the air for miles. The trunk is the elephant's survival kit, but also its soul made visible. It embodies their duality, strength and sensitivity, power and tenderness. Watching an elephant use its trunk is like watching nature's symphony in motion. Each flex, each curl, each breath, a reminder that life's greatest designs often come from the blending of opposites. Rising from the elephant's face like ancient spears, the tusks are symbols of majesty. They gleam in the sunlight as the giant moves through the savanna, commanding awe, respect, and, tragically, fear. Tusks are not ornaments. They are living teeth elongated incisors that grow throughout the elephant's life. For the animal, they are tools, instruments of survival carved from ivory. With them, elephants dig into dry riverbeds to uncover hidden water, a gift to their entire herd in times of drought. They strip bark from trees, turning wood into food. They lift logs, clear paths, and defend themselves from predators or rivals. In battles between bulls, tusks become weapons, clashing with thunderous force in duels that echo across the plains. To win is to secure dominance. To lose may mean exile from the herd. But beyond their use, tusks carry meaning in the social world of elephants. The size and shape of tusks can signal strength, wisdom, and age. A great bull with long, sweeping tusks is not just a survivor. He is a legend among elephants. Yet, what evolution sculpted as tools of life Humanity has turned into symbols of death. For centuries, ivory has been prized by humans for art, status, and wealth. Entire herds have been slaughtered, their bodies left behind, their tusks carved into trinkets. This relentless poaching has left scars not only on populations, but on evolution itself. In some parts of Africa, a shocking change has emerged. Elephants are increasingly born without tusks, what once was rare has become survival's answer to human greed. To be tuskless is now, ironically, to be safe. Tusks are thus paradoxes, weapons and tools, symbols of life and symbols of loss. They are nature's chisels, shaping both the elephant's world and our own imagination of wilderness. When we look into the curve of an elephant's tusk, we are staring into time itself, ivory that has grown year after year ring by ring, like the trunk of a tree. Each mark, each crack, is a history of droughts endured, battles fought, forests crossed. Tusks remind us of the elephant's power, but also of its peril. They stand as ivory monuments, 
both to the beauty of nature's design and to the tragedy of human desire. When the sun climbs high over the African plains, pouring fire onto the earth, most animals retreat to shade, panting in the heat. But the elephant does something extraordinary. It opens its giant ears like sails, and with a single flap, creates a breeze of survival. An elephant's ears are not merely decoration. They are living fans, vast surfaces of skin laced with a web of blood vessels. With every movement, hot blood circulates close to the surface, cooling in the rush of air before flowing back into the body. It is air conditioning made of flesh, an elegant design for a creature that must endure some of the harshest climates on Earth. But cooling is only part of their story. Elephant ears are also instruments of communication. When spread wide, they make the giant look even larger, an intimidating display against predators or rivals. When tucked back, they signal calm or submission. A single flick can swat away biting flies. A thunderous flap can signal frustration or warning. And then there is the hearing itself. Behind those great flaps lies an acoustic sensitivity beyond human comprehension. Elephants do not just hear what we hear. They sense sounds too deep for our ears to register. Infrasound, carried through the ground and air, rolls across landscapes in waves so low that we mistake them for silence. Yet the elephant listens and understands. Through their ears, they detect the footsteps of distant herds, the rumble of approaching thunder, even the warning calls of relatives miles away. It is as though the earth itself is whispering secrets, and elephants have the ears to hear them. Imagine a matriarch standing under a sky streaked with heat, her ears fan outward, shimmering in the sun, but her body is still. She tilts her head ever so slightly, listening. A message has arrived, too low for us, but clear to her. A herd far away is moving toward water. With a gentle rumble, she turns, leading her family across the savanna. The elephant's ears are, at once, fans, shields, and receivers of hidden messages. They are symbols of sensitivity and strength, of survival and connection. When we see them ripple in the wind, we are watching more than cooling flaps of skin. We are watching the elephant tuning itself to the music of the earth. Beneath the towering bulk of an elephant lies a quiet marvel, its feet. Round, padded, and seemingly simple, they are far more than pillars of support. They are living sensors, tuned to the pulse of the earth itself. Each foot is cushioned by a thick pad of fatty tissue that spreads the elephant's immense weight allowing this giant to walk almost silently across grasslands and forests. A creature weighing several tons moves with the hush of a shadow. It is this softness of step that makes their presence feel ghostly, even as their size feels impossible. But the feet are more than shock absorbers. They are instruments of perception. Within them lie nerve endings so sensitive that elephants can detect vibrations traveling through the ground. A distant thunderstorm. The low rumble of another herd even the approach of danger. What we miss as background noise, the elephant feels as language. These seismic signals travel for miles. A matriarch standing with her herd might suddenly still. Her foot presses firmly into the soil. She feels a tremor, perhaps the faint call of elephants half a day's walk away. She listens with her feet, then rumbles in reply, her voice traveling through earth and air. Communication becomes not just sound, but vibration a dialogue beneath our senses. The feet also reveal stories of survival. Scientists can read the tracks they leave behind, the weight of a mother carrying her calf, the hurried stride of a herd fleeing danger, the deep impressions of a thirsty march toward a shrinking waterhole. To follow elephant footprints is to follow the very journey of their lives. Even playfulness finds its way into their steps. Calves stomp and shuffle in games, mimicking the thunder of adults. Each playful beat is a rehearsal for the power and awareness they will one day command. The feet are paradoxes of design, soft yet strong, heavy yet sensitive. They hold up one of the largest creatures on land, while also keeping it connected to the subtlest murmurs of the earth. When elephants walk, they do not just move across the land, they move with the land. Every step is both weight and whisper, presence and perception. To watch an elephant stride is to watch a giant feeling the heartbeat of the planet. At first glance, the elephant's skin seems like armor, thick, rough, gray, and wrinkled like ancient stone. 
but beneath its rugged surface lies a story of adaptation, resilience, and even tenderness. An elephant's skin can be more than an inch thick in places, yet it is alive with sensitivity. It feels the bite of an insect, the brush of a branch, the touch of a companion's trunk. Beneath the fortress lies a world of nerves, ready to interpret the world's smallest signals. The wrinkles themselves are not mere age. They are a survival strategy. The deep grooves increase surface area, trapping moisture and mud. When an elephant bathes or wallows, water and dirt linger in the creases, keeping the giant cool under the burning sun. In these wrinkles, elephants carry their own sunscreen, their own shield against heat, dryness, and biting flies. Mud becomes their paint. With each roll in a water hole, with each joyous toss of wet earth, they renew the armor that protects them. To see a herd of elephants covering themselves in clay is to witness both survival and celebration. Giants turning necessity into ritual. But skin is more than shield. It is also canvas. Each scar tells a story. The brush of tusks in battle, the scrape of thorns, the mark of survival against drought and danger. No two elephants wear their skin alike, just as no two lives are lived the same. And within this rough exterior lies intimacy. Calves press their small bodies against their mothers, seeking comfort in the warmth of her side. Companions lean gently against each other, their skin-to-skin -skin contact carrying reassurance no words could provide. Elephant skin is paradox itself, thick enough to resist the savannah's brutality, yet sensitive enough to feel the touch of kinship. It is both armor and embrace. When the sun sets and the giants walk in silhouettes, their wrinkled hides glow with dust and twilight. In that moment, you realize, these wrinkles are not flaws. They are the maps of survival, written into the very flesh of the Earth's largest land animal. An elephant's skin is not just protection. It is history, memory, and endurance made visible. In a body filled with marvels, the trunk of miracles, the tusks of power, the brain of memory, the elephant's tail seems almost modest, thin, swishing, ending in a tuft of coarse hair, easy to overlook, easy to dismiss. But in nature, nothing is without purpose. The tail, though small compared to the rest of the giant's form, is a guardian of daily life. With one sweep, it drives away clouds of biting flies. In the sweltering heat of Africa or the humid forests of Asia, this small defense can mean the difference between calm and torment. For calves, still fragile in their early days, the tail of their mother becomes a shield against insects, a moving curtain of protection. Yet the tail is more than a tool against pests. It is also a signal. An elephant flicking its tail may be relaxed, grazing in peace. But a rapid swish, sharp and restless, can reveal irritation or unease. In herds, these subtle movements become part of the unspoken language that binds them. For the young, the tail is even more, sometimes a guide rope in the wilderness. Calves are often seen holding onto the tail of the elephant ahead, forming a living chain as they move through tall grass or thick forest. It is a simple act, but also a lesson. Stay close, stay safe, stay together. And in its hair lies another story. Elephant tail hairs are thick, bristly, almost wiry, once so prized by humans that they were woven into bracelets and charms, symbols of power and protection. Another reminder that even the smallest part of the elephant carries a weight far beyond its size. The tail may not command attention like tusks or trunks, but it completes the portrait of the elephant. It is patience, persistence, protection, a quiet sentinel swaying with every step. In the dance of dust and sunlight, when a herd moves slowly across the land, their tails swish in unison. Not grand, not dramatic, but steady, rhythmic, essential. The humble guardians at the rear of the giant's form. Because sometimes, survival is not about grandeur. Sometimes, it is about the small gestures that keep life moving forward. For an animal so immense, the elephant's fate often turns on something surprisingly small. Its teeth. Hidden within the vast jaws of the giant lies a clock, and with every chew, the hands of that clock move forward. Unlike humans, elephants do not have an endless set of replacements. Over their lifetime, they grow just six sets of molars. Each set is larger and stronger than the last, built to grind down grass, bark, and roots. Their teeth are not sharp. 
They are vast, ridge slabs, like natural millstones, designed to crush the toughest fibers of the earth. But time is unyielding. One by one, these molars wear down. A new set grows in from the back, pushing the old forward, replacing it like pages turning in a book. This cycle continues for decades, until the sixth and final set. When those teeth wear away, there are no more replacements, and that is when the great giant begins to fade. Without teeth to chew, an elephant cannot process the food it needs. Some move to swamps or river edges, where softer vegetation lingers, buying themselves a little more time. But eventually, the clock runs out. The teeth, those humble, hidden engines of survival, decide the length of an elephant's life. It is a quiet truth, almost poetic. A creature strong enough to topple trees, wise enough to remember landscapes across generations, tender enough to grieve and to love, brought to its twilight not by predators, but by the wearing away of molars, by time measured in bites. Scientists have even traced elephant migrations to this truth. Ancient pathways often led to areas with softer grasses, places where aging elephants could find food gentle enough for worn teeth. In a way, entire landscapes have been shaped by the rhythm of elephant teeth. And yet, within this fragility lies continuity. As one elephant nears its end, calves are born, their first tiny teeth already preparing them for a lifetime of chewing, grinding, and growing. The clock resets, the story begins anew. The teeth of an elephant remind us that even the greatest lives are finite. They are the hidden metronome of survival, ticking away beneath the surface until the final note is struck. And so, in the elephant's mouth lies both strength and mortality, a reminder that even giants are bound by time. The elephant is not just an animal. It is a mosaic of marvels, each body part a story written by evolution, each feature a verse in nature's oldest poem, the trunk, a living symphony of muscle, breathing, touching, and embracing life itself. The tusks, ivory tools of creation and destruction, symbols of both power and peril. The ears, vast sails, cooling the body and tuning into the hidden songs of the earth. The feet, pillars of strength and sensors of vibration, feeling the heartbeat of the planet with every step. The skin, wrinkled armor, both shield and memory, storing water, mud, and history in its folds. The tail, the humble guardian, small yet vital, swishing away torment, guiding the young. And the teeth, the clock of life, grinding food into survival, counting down the years until silence. Each part alone is remarkable. Together, they form a being that is more than the sum of its anatomy. The elephant is an ecosystem in motion, shaping forests by knocking down trees, carving paths to water, feeding grasslands with their dung, creating life wherever they go. They are engineers of landscapes, guardians of memory, emblems of survival. Their bodies are not just machines of biology. They are works of art, painted in wrinkles, crowned with tusks, powered by hearts as vast as their shadows. And yet, for all their might, elephants are fragile before the hands of humans. Poaching, habitat loss, and climate change threaten to silence their thunderous steps, to erase their ancient wisdom from the earth. To protect the elephant is not just to save an animal. It is to preserve a living masterpiece, a creature that carries within its body the secrets of evolution, the memory of landscapes, and the reflection of our own humanity. When you look at an elephant, you are not looking at a beast. You are looking at a story millions of years in the making, a story told in trunks and tusks, ears and feet, skin and brain, tail and teeth. A story that belongs not just to the elephant, but to the world. Because in the end, the elephant's body is not just its own. It is the body of the earth itself, sculpted in gray and grace, written in power and tenderness. The living giant, the keeper of memory, the masterpiece of nature, 